now let's look at the key of C. Now, just like G, uh, C has got seven chords in it and they all work alphabetically. So the first chord that we're gonna look at is obviously C as number one, and then number two will be a derivative of D, and then number three will be a derivative of E, then four will be F, five will be G, and so on. So let's start off by looking at C. Now, um, in the key of C, I probably play C as just a straight, it's a straightforward C, not a C add nine, because the root chord, or chord number one, is always the one that you really want to be the most home-feeling chord, so as straight as possible is always good. So that's C. Now for D, um, did you notice in uh, the key of G, chord two is a minor chord, and for each key it works in exactly the same way. So chord two is a minor chord uh, in the key of C. So chord two is a D, so it's a D minor. Now, what I quite like for this to give a nice voicing and, and it makes it easy on the fingers, is actually go to a D minor seven. So from the C there, what we do, um, we basically take finger number two and we move it over from string four fret two to string three. And then I just flatten off my first finger to bar it across the first two strings. And that gives me a D minor seven. So remember to play four strings here. That's a D minor seven. The next chord is E minor, so chord three is also a minor as well. So um, remember your chords go from major to one and then two and three are minor chords and this works exactly the same way in every major key that we do. So chord three would be E minor. So you could just do a straightforward E minor because it works well from, from C. You could do the E minor seven if you wanted to works okay. Another possibility is if you remember we had the G over B in the G sequence, so it's a one chord with a third note on the bass, this works in exactly the same way. So we could have a C chord, which is uh, the chord of one with the E bass note. And the way to play that is just a C chord and just make sure you hit the E. First three chords you have a C, then you move over to the D minor seven, and then we could do the E minor or the C over E. So those are the co common chords that come up in the key of C. Now the next chord, so chord number four, so we've had C, D, E, and then F is chord number four. Now for a lot of people, um, they might find the F bar chord a little bit tricky, a lot of people struggle with that if they're not particularly keen on bar chords. Um, but also that whole kind of bar chord sound doesn't really have any ringing open strings to it. So the chord that I like to use is F2 or F add 9. And simply what you do, you start from your C, take off your middle finger, and add on your little finger onto string 4, fret 3, so just underneath your third finger or your ring finger. So you get that kind of sound. And then with your first finger, I want you to bar it again just across the first two strings, just like you did for the D minor seven. And that gives you an F add nine. Some people call it an F two, it's really an add nine. It's just like that. Now, the nice thing about the F chord there is when we get to the G chord, which is chord number five, instead of going to a regular G, what we can do is take that same shape and slide it up two frets. Now that becomes something called a G5. So it's not a G add nine. It's because that open string slightly changes the, the name of the chord there. So we've got F add nine, G5. Now another thing you could do, if you wanted to play a G5, you could play that standard G5 we went to beforehand. But a nice thing you can do, is to play a straightforward open G without this first finger. So you're just damping that string five there. And it lets you go to what's called a suspended chord. So your first finger goes on the C note. So it's just in the same chord, and then you just put your first finger on the C and take it off again. And that's quite appropriate in some circumstances. 
Then following on from that, we've got chord six. So we had C, D, E, F, G, and now A is our sixth chord. And just like in the key of G, six is a minor. So remember, um, you've got two, three, and six on minor in every sort of major key that we're doing there. Chords one, four, and five are major. So um, just always think two, three, six are minor. So we've got A minor. Now, from the C down to a straightforward A minor is a pretty kind of standard change. But again, I quite like to use the A minor seven. So, and all I'm literally doing is just taking my third finger off. And it's giving me what's called a smooth voice leading. And what I mean by a voice leading is notes that kind of go together. So if you think about a backing vocalist, when they're singing around the melody, they're generally not singing notes that kind of go up, up and then really low. And they want notes that kind of blend in a nice way to interact with the melody. And that's what we're doing here with really guitar chords. So we're taking as many open strings as possible that are common to the chords that we're going from and to. So from the C to the A minor seven, so you've got a ringing open E there, you've got a C that always there, a ringing open G, and, and then, this, then the E note there as well. So that's the A minor seven. And then lastly, our seventh chord in the key of C. Again, the, the right note is a B. So remember, it's C is one, D, E, F, G, the five, Six is an A, seven is a B. So it just follows along alphabetically like it does on any other key. Um, now in the key of C there aren't any sharps and flats, but again, don't worry about that for the time being. That's something that we tackle on our intermediate guitar course. But just for the time being, remember that B is your seventh chord. Now, as in the key of G, um, it should be B diminished. Um, but again, that sounds uh, a real kind of jazzy sort of dark chord. So what we tend to use in a lot of worship songs, we tend to use a fifth chord with a seventh bass note. So the fifth chord um, in the key of C is, so it's G, one, two, three, four, five. So C, D, E, F, G. So fifth chord slash seventh bass note. So um, you basically got a G, uh, with a B bass note. And the way I play that, probably going from a C, I'd probably just use those two notes there. So we did do it in the key of G like that. But we, since we've used the, the, the open E for so, for so much of our chords, I'd probably just use those two. So first finger here, string five, fret number two. And then the little finger, or your third finger, on string two, fret number three. So those are your seven chords. So let's just recap. So to start off with, we have a C for number one. Then for two, we have a D minor seven. So it's just there. For three, we have an E minor. So we can either do a straightforward E minor, possibly an E minor seven, which is just like your G over B, but make sure you hit the low note. Or a C over E, so a one, over three or one slash three, so it's a C with an E bass note. That often comes up a lot. So songs like the famous one that comes up a lot, just like that. And then for four, we have the F chord, but we're gonna go F add nine. So remember, little finger underneath the third finger, just flatten off your first finger. And try and just push this third finger up into the that low string there, so it, it doesn't sound, or some people kind of move their thumb across. Slide it up two frets, it becomes a G. Five. Then the A minor seven is number six. And lastly, our seventh chord in our sequence is G over B. And then back to C again. So again, I'd suggest you just pause your player and get those seven chords practiced under your belt. If you, you want to use one of the drum beats on the DVD, that's fine. But just make sure you're familiar with them and we'll come back and do it with a backing track.
Now for the backing track, again, I've looked at Amazing Grace, obviously, same song, same tune, but now in the key of C. And what I've also done with it is to do it in a 3-4 kind of time. So we're going to adapt some of the things that we learned about playing in 3-4 a little bit earlier um, and put them into this backing track. So if I just play it for you, so two bars, here we go. Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Okay, so strumming pattern wise, I think what we'll do is just play on the downbeats and then give it a little bit of movement at the end of that. So something like this. So we do one, two, three, one, two. One, two, three. There's this walk down, which we'll show you in a minute. Okay, so what we've got there, so it's one, two, three, down, up. And just at the end to give it a bit of movement. And then to just give it some space on that second bar, we're gonna do one, two. Now what I'm using here, I'm not using a, a pick, I'm just using my fingers. So um, you could either just do with your fingers like that, just to give it a little bit of practice or you could play with your thumb, the bass note. One, two, three, and one, two. Um, or alternatively, you could use your first finger to play that bass note as well. So one, two, three, one, two. But by playing with your fingers, it just gives you a little bit more, bit more delicacy. Now, just before we attack the backing track, um, I'll show you the walk down that I did. Now, it occurs in exactly the same way as if we did the walk down in the key of G. So we start with chord number four, and then it just goes all the way alphabetically down to chord number one. So chord number four is F, so C, D, E, F, so four, and then it goes three, two, one. So the notes we want are F, E, D, C. Now, rather than playing all of the chords, um, you often find walk downs um, occur in this way uh, in the key of C. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to really just play the middle strings, so those kind of middle strings there. But staying with a, a chord of C, I put my little finger on the F note. So it's the high F, not the low F. So there's F note on string four, fret number three. So you're playing the middle strings there, F, and then you swap to your second finger just on a regular C chord, E, so that gives you an E note there, and then you take it off, becomes a D note, C. So it's F, E, D, C. So that's a quick way to get a nice little walk down. Okay, so for the backing track, we'll just walk through it chord by chord. And where you've got an option of some of those different chords or voicings, so for instance, uh, when we get to the third chord, you can either play a one over three, so it's C over E, or an E minor, or an E minor seven. The choice is really yours, but as you go to that backing track and you practice it through and through, just take some of those different chords and decide which one you really prefer. Um, the other thing as well is when we get to that chord two, just as we did in chord in the key of G, um, it's actually D minor seven. So that's what I want you to practice. Um, but remember that the chord two um, that sounds most traditional in Amazing Grace is actually to go to the two major, which is uh, a D chord. So that comes outside the key because the note that's used in the D chord is F sharp and not F. And of course, F is the one that occurs in the key of C, not F sharp. Um, that's why it goes outside the key. So just for the sake of the exercise, practice D minus seven. But if you want to use this in a real situation, go to a straightforward D. Okay, here we go. So one, two, on the C. Over E, so F. That's chord one on the C. Chord six, A minor seven. Minus seven G. Suss it in the back. C. Up. A three. Chord six. Chord seven. G have a B. Walk it down. So one. 
four, three, try E minus seven. To the F. To C. A minus seven. D minus seven. Up to the G here. Back to the C. Chord three. Six, chord seven, walk it down. Let's go one more time. E minus seven, F, to C, A minus seven. So that was D major. See how it interacts? G, suss it, and C. E minus seven. Chord four. Chord one. Chord six. Chord seven. Walk it down. Now the backing track carries on. So what I'm going to get you to do is just to go to the backing track now and try those different voicings and see what you like and see how you can blend them together. Spiritually, it's always found the best place to start. It's just to simply, you know, I always ask God, you know, would you come and speak to me? Come and, you know, open my eyes to see what it is that you want to do. I think when we're leading worship, it's ultimately a response. And ultimately, the Holy Spirit is the chief worship leader. So we're trying to see, you know, what it is that he's doing, what it is that he wants for a particular Sunday. So by just being open and praying that through, that's I always find the best place to start. But then practically... I think it's really important that we're thinking through, um, you know, as we've talked about the song selections, the kind of appropriate songs, but also um, musically how we're going to arrange the songs. And sometimes perhaps the music is, isn't really thought through and it's just a bit, you get this kind of wall of sound that's not very pleasing to anyone's ears. So to think how we can use the instruments to, you know, to bring that variety and, and use the dynamics so you've got the really kind of exuberant loud passionate praise but then they're kind of that beautiful still tender kind of songs as well just so we're going on a journey and uh, you know so there's so many practical things as well like music for musicians song lists um, for the words people so that everything can be thought through and, and and the better prepared you are I've discovered the better equipped you can be to be spontaneous and to, to step out in a different direction if the need is there show you some little tricks and techniques that you can use to embellish that chord sequence um, to make it sound a little bit pretty just as we did when we were playing in the key of G. So the first thing I'm going to do if you just put on a straightforward C chord and I'll show you a little hammer-on technique so it sounds like this and what I'm doing there I'm playing the C chord but really, I mean, you can play the, the whole chord or just the bass note. And then the second time I hit it down, so it's boom, I'm going. So I'm just strumming down and then I'm hammering on with my second finger. And when you hammer on, just make sure you hammer on quickly and nice and hard. So it's. So it's down, down, three, down, down. Try it with me. And. Again. Okay, now let's add the next bit to it. And the strumming pattern that goes with the rest of it sounds basically like this without the hammer on. So it's down, down, up, down, up, down, down. So it's down, 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 up, down, up, down, down. So it's down, 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 up, down, up, down, down. With me, so it's down, 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 up, down, up, down, down. So it's two downs, down, 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 up, down, up, down, down. Once more. And when you put it together with a hammer on, it sounds like this. So it's 
So that's down. And again. Once more. So practice that. So you can further embellish it and make it sound something like this. So it's... And again. Once more. Now to work that out, it's easiest if you split it into two parts. So the first part goes like this. So we play the bass note. And then we do the hammer on, just as you did before. And then you do a little down and up with the top string. So it's... So one, two, three, four. So try it with me. One, two, three, four. So it's down, hammer on, and then down up. Three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Three, four. Two, three, four. Okay, and then we need to add the next bit. And for the next bit, you play the top three strings, and then you hammer on with your second finger, now onto the A note, which is on the third string, fret two. So it's, it's just like that, and then you pull it off. So it's, so it's down. So just very slowly, it's, so it's, try it with me, and three, four, three, four, three, four, three, four. So once you've got that bit, then you go back onto the fourth string, and then just play open, and then you hammer it on again, so it's, so just like that. So let's demonstrate that. So it's two, three, four, two, three, four, three, four. Last time. So if you want to pause your player and get those elements and let's put it together. So it's. So try again. One, two, three, four. And then you come back on the C. So one, two, three, four. Two, three. Two, three. Two, three. So it's one, two. So within the context of the song, when you come back onto that last C note, if it's in a 3-4 time, then that's the one beat of the next bar. So within Amazing Grace, uh, we go for a C, and then we go for the chord 3, which is either E minor 7, or the C over E. So what I'd suggest, you play it, and then the next time round you play the E bass note. So it sounds like this. And then you can go to the F, and then back to the C. But you can use that little twiddle on any chord where you've got access to those two middle strings. So you could do the A minor, so. And then the D. And you can go for the G. And then the sus to the G. So just try putting it together in the context of the backing track. Another thing you can try is just doing a basic hammer on a semitone below the note you're starting with. So what I mean by that, if you're playing a C, the bass note is a C, and you could actually start with playing a semitone below. Now a semitone is just one fret. So in other words, one fret lower than the C just happens to be here, that's a B note. Now, with the C, you're basically going and hammering onto it. So you start with the, the finger on the B note, the second finger, or you could just do, so just like that. So, so try that with me. Three, and, 
three. And. And you can do that with a variety of different notes within the, the key of C. Um, it works for every other key too. But for instance, if you go into the F, you've got an E there. So I'm just hammering. That sounds nice. Obviously anything like the E, you can't go any lower than that. So you can't do that in this particular context. But just experiment around and see what you can find. So for our backing track, we could start off on the C, so the hammer on there. E. And then the F. Back to the C. Now when we get to the A minor, you could just do a hammer on by lifting on and off one of the notes of your chords. So, so it's just literally. Doesn't sound so good, maybe go for a more of a bass note. And then for the G. So again, I'm just going a semitone below. And it generally works best if the note that you're hammering from and then to, uh, both those notes are within the key. But sometimes you can get away with it because it's quite a quick little thing. One more thing you can do with these C shapes is actually just to play the bass note and keep a C and a G on the top. So anytime you put a, a, a note from the first and the fifth within the key, it sounds really, really stable. I'll show you what I mean. So we've got a G here with a little finger on string one, fret three, and the C as we've done before on string two, fret one. So that's your C and the G, and then you've got a G there as well. So they can sort of stay at all times, really. So all you have to do is change just the first bass note. So for the C, you've got a C there. Now to make that work properly, the string underneath it, the string four, needs to be just damp. So just pull your finger down. So you just get a kind of really damped chord there. So that's called one. And then just work with the bass notes. So two is the D there. So that kind of works like that. Now if you want to damp those, you could kind of just hook your thumb over the top. Or if you wanted to make it a bit more D minor, just put your finger on the A note there. And then for chord three, we've got the over the E. You could make that an E minor if you wanted to. And then the F is four. So again, I just probably put my finger over the top of those just to damp these things. So you've got one, two, three, four the F and then G is 5 and just put your third finger over to the G there. You can probably take that off if you wanted to. So that's G and I'm just damping that, that A note there. G and then back on for A minor. So you could do the A minor 7 like that. And then G of a B so you just put your first finger, second finger over to string 5 fret 2 and then back on the C, so it's one, two, three, four, five, and then uh, six, seven, one. And that's one way you can get the whole thing droning together without moving around too much. So just so you can hear what that actually sounds like, I'm gonna put a few of those techniques together over the backing track, and then you can go away and practice it yourself. So here we go. Sus the G.
just go and have a practice. Now, when we talk about worship leading and being in a worship band, a lot of people get really hung up on signals. What signals to use when changing from a chorus to a bridge or back to a verse? And some people kind of lift a leg or hand signals or whatever. And some of those are quite difficult to do, particularly if you're playing at the same time. One of the things I'd really recommend is eye contact. You can communicate a tremendous amount just by uh, what's going on with your eye contact and how you're looking at other people. So think about the way that your band is actually structured on stage and how many people you can actually see. So many times I actually see a worship band set up like a rock band where the drummer is at the back and uh, all the other instruments are behind the main worship leader. And whilst that looks good, it's very, very difficult to, for you to communicate anything else to the rest of your team. And do we really need it like that anyway? If you're playing in a rock band, very often you've got a very set um, set of songs and you kind of work through them and you've obviously practiced them as they are. Now when we're doing kind of community worship music and things can change and ideas can change and if you're listening to the Holy Spirit, things might go off in a different direction. You need to be able to communicate to the rest of the band. So why not think about where you position the rest of your band to help you? So rather than the drummer at the back, why not put the drummer kind of side on 90 degrees to you? Maybe even go just slightly back so you can actually see them and communicate very, very, very clearly to them just to your right. Maybe put everybody in a semicircle, something like that. Do you need to be right at the front? So it's a really good question, a really good thing to think about is exactly where are the rest of the band so that you can easily communicate and give them eye contact, you know, so you can tell when a song's going up, you can kind of raise up, go down, when it's going down, you know, and just even your just natural facial expressions will tell people what's happening within a song. So have a think about that. is don't overplay and one of the things I find is that musicians like to overplay it's like I, I worked with a keyboard player once and he did every instrument possible on his keyboard the bass line lead lines and you almost felt like saying look sit on your left hand and just play with your right hand because we've got a drummer we've got a bass player just you do what you do well uh, I suppose one of the great examples of bands uh, using the principle that uh, less is more would be a band like U2, uh, who I guess some people say are one of the best worship bands in the world. But it's just simply uh, guitar, bass and drums. And they underplay all the time. And that's what makes their sound so big. So my advice to everybody who's part of a worship band is play less because less is more. Underplay. Don't, don't play every chord and create space because it's that creation of space creating dynamics um, that allows other people to come in and fill those spaces um, so yeah underplay don't overplay <laughs>